You are listening to a Cult Talk Network podcast. File access granted. Welcome all you believers, idealists, skeptics, and all those questioning the world around them. I'm Ty. I'm Bailey. And this is Cult, Cult Talk's Talks Conspiracy. So today it is part of Cult Tober. It's our second Cult Tober episode. Yes. And this time I'm presenting. Last week or last episode, Bailey presented with Mothman. Yes. Our creepy part one. Yeah. Part one. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so much more to tell in that at the at the end of it, we found more that I didn't even know that I would really <laughs> want to revisit. So, but you're you're bringing me something that you're bringing us something that I'm definitely going to have more nightmares about. <laughs> I I I think because I this is something I I've never heard of before. Yeah. Until I, until right before I started researching it, so Ooh. I found this on uh, on Reddit. There is a thing called the uh, conspiracy theory iceberg. Oh God! And you find it all the time on YouTube. But basically, the those icebergs that uh, you you probably seen them on YouTube. A lot of people do like breakdowns and stuff of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. But the the concept of icebergs, you know, you have like a serial killer iceberg. Mm-hmm. You know, like start at the tip top of like things that you know. And it goes all the way down to the bottom tier as like this really obscure stuff. So that's where I first heard about the ocean at night. I heard about it on a video from the Windagoon, Ooh. who's a YouTuber I like to watch. Uh, he did a uh, video on the conspiracy theory iceberg. Nice. I heard about it and it just immediately interested me. So awesome. Awesome. then I had to go and start researching it. And that was a whole nother thing. But, uh, uh, this thing sounds like a creepy pasta. You know what creepy pastas oh are? Oh my god! No, like, I don't. It... But I love the sound of the the <laughs> creepy pasta. <laughs> creepy pastas are those like weird internet stories. Like they're like made up uh, internet horror stories. Oh, they okay, okay. They usually they usually come from like Reddit. So oh, you'll yeah. find like creepy pasta readings. Like this sounds like a creepy pasta is what I thought it was. That's oh, why god. when I first heard it, I was like, oh, that just sounds like one of those like made up internet stories. And then I started researching it and there's like actually like a a lot of, you know, very interesting things that, you know, it's grounded and like it's taken seriously as a legitimate, as a legitimate conspiracy. So I I read about it, researched it, and I was like, this has to be Cultober. Awesome. So I'm really excited to do this. And and you've never heard of The Ocean Night. No, I haven't. I, I'm terrified. I, I really do not like the thought of being underwater like i really don't um i yeah it's ter- like i almost drowned as a kid so i, right. I the like underwater is terrifying to me like even like at the pool like anna and i were just at like her apartment complex's pool and like we got in five feet of water which i'm five nine <laughs> and it got up to my neck and i'm like i can't do this i cannot do this <laughs> like so no i i do uh, not get underwater we go to the ocean and i only go to go to about my knee height and then i'm done i'm out so <laughs> yeah no i don't like this at all like and we just there's just so much we don't know about the ocean there too. is and that, that's kind of where this is going to touch on like we, the unknown of what's in the ocean. Like, I have a weird, like, uh, I wouldn't say I'm afraid of the ocean. I'm just very cautious of it. But I'm very interested in the ocean. Like, I always, like, think about uh, in a different life, I would have been, like, an oceanographer or something. Because oh, yeah. I, I really am, like, drawn to water. I, I love being in water. Um, uh-huh. You know, my, my apartment has a pool. And, like, I spend a lot of time in it. Mm-hmm. I, I just legitimately love being in the water. And, uh, but it does, it's one of those things I'm very cautious about. It's... Mm-hmm. I know there's like a lot of things that can kill you that we know of and maybe some things we don't know about. Here's the crazy thing. We know more about space than we do our own oceans. Right. Yeah. Like what a crazy fucking thought. Like, oh, oh, it's wild. It's I just and that just doesn't sit well with me because I'm like, we have the technology like we've been able to go to space. Don't tell me we can't make anti-gravity. I think think the biggest part of like the exploration of the ocean is like, when you go in a space, I mean, sure, it's a vacuum and everything, but mm-hmm. the the difference of exploring the ocean is the pressure. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. The deeper you go, and and you know, at a certain point in the ocean, I mean, there's only so much that you know modern technology can do to keep it safe mm-hmm. because the pressure is so uh, so heavy down there. So I think that's a large part of it. But you would think by now we'd have some some means of finding you know what's down there in the deep darkness, and maybe we have, maybe we've. Maybe we don't know about it yet. I dislike that. 
a whole fucking lot. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Cause you like y'all know how I am with aliens. Like tell us it's real. Like, and that's just my like curiosity side of my brain. The ocean is like the danger side of my brain. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Children go in that. Like uh, you need to tell us if there's like an actual danger besides sharks. And like, you're more likely to get hit by a bus than you are get bit by a shark. Right. Uh, but yeah. the, with all the crap we're putting in our water nowadays, who knows? Like, yeah, some kind of mutated monstrosities down there. Oh, <laughs> shark. I like the I like the idea of like uh, the USOs. Do you ever heard about those? Yes. Oh, Unidentified submerged objects. Yes. Uh, that's that's a very interesting theory that we'll definitely have to touch on at some point. The idea of um, you know aliens uh, living in our own oceans. I think that is a super interesting concept. And I would love to dive into that here at some point. But uh-huh. for today, uh, we're diving into uh, file 004 here on Cultural Conspiracy, and that is The Ocean at Night. And I'm very excited to present this to you here as part of Cultober, because I think this is one that if you don't know about, which I, I would I would go ahead and I would say a large majority of the people listening do not know oh, what yeah. The Ocean at Night is. Mm-hmm. And it's also like one of those things, too, it's so uh, nondescript, like what is The Ocean at Night? I'm sure you're already kind of conjuring up your own ideas of what The Ocean at Night theory is, but I assure you, you have no idea. So it's... <laughs> It's it's very interesting, and I cannot wait for this. But uh, I, I guess Bailey, are are you ready to uh, dive on in into uh, <laughs> file zero zero four? Oh yes, flippers right, on and ahead. everything. Let's go ahead and uh, unseal the ocean at night. So, Bailey, what do you think the Ocean at Night theory is? Oh, my gosh. I really don't know. I really don't. I really honestly thought you were going to tell me, like, ghost stories of the ocean at night, and now I'm really terrified. Uh, yeah. it's it, You have no idea. I, I Because you told me to do little research, I just kind of decided I'm going to go in cold and just be amazed. <laughs> but, yeah, the ocean at night, I have a feeling it's got something to do with some sort of intelligent life. So with this, I had to do like uh, research and it was very hard. I will say like if you're wanting to look up the ocean night after this, there's only a few real good sources uh, I was able to find to pull this data from. Now There are little things you can kind of take chunks here and chunks there and research them independently. Uh, but to get the full overarching uh, narrative of what the ocean night conspiracy theory is, uh, I found, like I said, the Wendigoon uh, on YouTube. He did the uh, Conspiracy Theory Iceberg, and he talks a lot about the Ocean Night. Uh, there is a another channel called uh, The Truly Bizarre. Uh, they did a video on it, and then I found a um, blog online from a guy named Adam Hennessy, and he has a uh, article on there called Gulf of Aden Incident, oh. and that details the um, Ocean Night as well. So there, it's really hard research. And I had a hard time doing it, but I think I was able to um, at least put together uh, my definitive data on what the ocean night theory is uh, for our listeners. So uh, there's a few things we have. It's it's going to be kind of a trek to get there because we have to fill in a lot of the blanks and we have to establish uh, a lot of the key players in this. Oh, nice. or a lot of the key events are going to lead up to this because oh, awesome. they're all they're all going to sound very different, but they're all going to come together into what the ocean night theory is and and it's it this is all real stuff too which is why this you know like i said it comes off at first like it would be some sort of creepy pasta or some kind of made up internet lore but it's it, there's this is all real things they're all documented in some way and for the most part all this stuff actually happened that you gotta keep that in mind that as, as crazy as all sounds this is all real stuff you can look up so we're going to start with the somali government during the somali civil war and the dissolution of their Navy. So uh, after that happened, the waters around Somalia became basically uh, territorial waters. So there was no protection from any naval authority, and it became an open invitation for foreign foreign fishers to come in and start fishing the waters of Somalia. Uh There was no Navy to keep them out there. There was no laws because the the Navy had been disbanded throughout the uh, Somali Civil War. Oh, wow. That's fucking so, terrifying in yeah. itself. <laughs> like, so yeah, so there, it was basically just free reign. There was, you know, all all these fishing companies uh, could send 
you know, these big fishing vessels to Somalia to go through and just, you know, plunder the waters. Mm -hmm. Like that was, that was happening. Now, what, what came from that is that all the locals who, who thrived off the fishing there and, you know, used that as a source for food or, uh, as a job, right? You know, they, they were being pushed out because these larger companies were coming in and, you know, fishing the waters. Ugh. Now, another thing that came from this, because the Navy was gone, there was no, like I said, there was no patrol, there was nothing, there was no laws. Uh, this area also became very popular for unsanctioned pollution dumping. So, like, companies would come and dispose of all their, you know, toxic waste mm. into the water of Somalia because there was no one to say they couldn't. See, that's, so, that's where it all goes wrong. Right here in this <laughs> moment, pollution dumping. Let's, let's all bookmark this here. Well, it all, it all kind of came in a head because, you know, you take into account all the overfishing that's happening now. Oh, yeah. Um, all, all these companies coming in and basically just bringing all these patrollers, just pulling tons and tons of fish out a day. Oh. Uh, that's depleting the fish. Then also you have all these chemicals get dumped in the water. That's killing the fish. Mm-hmm. So it was really affecting the people around Somalia. You know, they were they were losing basically their way of life. Oh God! This at first, what what happened after this was at first kind of a uh, in a way a noble venture. So what happened was this was all happening around them. So the Somali uh, fishermen and the people dependent on this, they basically banded together and they decided they were going to take back their waters. As they so th- they went out and they would run off any fi- any uh, unsanctioned fishing vessels that were in there. If they seen someone dumping pl- uh, toxic waste, they would come and run out. They run them off. You know, they would employ firearms and all that mm-hmm. because again, no laws, and they had to do what they had to do to uh, deter these foreign ships from you know plundering their waters. Oh yeah. Now a way they would do this was they would use firearm to scare them off, but it eventually. Uh, came to a point where they were then boarding the ships. Oh no! And they would then you uh, take hostages. Oh no! And then they would use the hostages to get money from these companies. You know, they'd board a, a ship, take a hot, take the the crew hostage, and hold them ransom to the company. I mean, they uh, weren't th- stupid th- th- about is, it. <laughs> yeah. So th- this is this is where you this is the well I just told you is basically the uh, origins of uh, Somali piracy. Now, this is a big thing in like the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, after the Somali Civil War. I, I remember it for some reason when I was a kid, uh, when I was younger in high school, it was a big deal. Like the Somali pirate epidemic was like huge. Mm-hmm. All, the, all these major corporations, even like, you know, because at first they were just targeting like fishing vessels and yeah. uh, companies that were, uh, you know, dumping toxic waste. But, you know, after they started realizing, oh, we take these people hostage and these companies give us money, they started targeting like everybody. So it started as a, a very noble venture, but oh, then it yeah. became piracy. I would say at first they were kind of like Robin Hood. Yeah. And then, then they just became pirates. Yeah. So the area in which this was most common was the Gulf of Aden. And this is a passing between the countries of Yemen and Somalia and the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea is where this was happening mm-hmm. a lot. So right off the shores of Somalia is where all this was taking place. Now, in most cases of the hijacking, the crews were unharmed, uh, ransom was paid, and the pirates would release the crew, and they would get back in their boats, set sail, and it'd be the end of the day. Now, however, in May of 2007, a Chinese sailor was killed when the owner of the ship failed to meet ransom demands. I think uh, and, th- and this prompted the United Nations to take this, you know, take finally take this and uh, take this very seriously. After this, you know, finally after someone was killed, the United Nations stepped in and they drafted Resolution 1838, which authorized military force to respond to acts of piracy. Oh, and this is uh, this is very important to our story. This is uh, so at this point, uh, everything leading up to this, these pirates are basically out here meddling in uh, all these big corporations uh, affairs and holding people hostage. And it was kind of like looked at as more of a nuisance, I would say. Uh, oh, up until yeah. this uh, this Chinese employee was killed in 2007. Now it's a real it, like now people now, are getting... now it's serious. Yeah, the piracy increased by nearly double between 2008 and 2009, and a multinational task force was organized. Now this was made up of 27 countries, naval forces, and it was called Combined Task Force 151. So CTF 151, 
and its mission was to disrupt piracy and protect maritime operations. And they specifically focused on the Gulf of Aden, which again, we're off the coast of Somalia. This is uh, Red Sea and the Arabian Sea. Mm-hmm. So this where they were focused, and it was to uh, strictly target the acts of piracy, or at least what we were told. Now, in 2010, here's another big player. Uh, so we've, we've already talked about the the Somali piracy, how it came to be, how it was affecting major corporations, and now they're shedding blood. And this went ahead and uh, was the cause for CTF-151 to be formed, allegedly. Right. So in 2010... Uh, the internet was shaken when a series of previously undisclosed documents from U.S. Army intelligence were leaked. Oh, These God. documents immediately caught the attention of the U.S. government, which launched a criminal investigation into the source of the leaks. And this was WikiLeaks. You ever heard of WikiLeaks? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, for those you don't know, it was founded in 2006 by Australian activist Julian Assange. Uh, WikiLeaks has described itself as an advocacy group to expose serious violations to human rights and civil liberties. Also, in a couple instances I read, it's also considered a political party, I guess. Really? I guess Julian Assange, that's that's his political party he he uh, pledges allegiance to, so I guess it is considered to be a political party in some, some arenas. Oh. Mm. Uh, the whole purpose of WikiLeaks, uh, they released government documents exposing atro- atrocities uh, in the U.S. prison Guantanamo Bay, uh, CIA-designed computer viruses, mm. uh, secret documents from the Church of Scientology, oh God, and uh, plans for political coups. So they were out there basically just releasing all these documents that nobody wanted to pay attention to. They would then release on the internet and make public and put eyes on them and expose all this dark, you know, treacherous shit that was happening in the background uh, that none of us were aware of. That was oh, yeah. the whole purpose of uh, Julian Assange's WikiLeaks. That was that was a big part in uh, my my conspiracy birth. <laughs> WikiLeaks. See, I always heard of like WikiLeaks. I never like I I've never like sought out WikiLeaks documents. I don't know why. Oh, I have. Uh, oh, I have. have. They're very interesting. Really? Oh, yeah. It's. I mean, it's all there. It's it's literally all there. I think I read a thing, or I may have dreamed that I read a thing that WikiLeaks got shut down. It, I'm not it's sure. kind of like in limbo. Uh, yeah. I, I might talk about that in like an undisclosed. Like I yeah. have a little thing wrapped for that, but oh yeah, uh, it's kind of like a. It's kind of like no one really knows where it is right oh, now. Oh yeah, no one knows who runs so, it. Like, well, I mean, we, right. we know who run it, but like, we don't know how the f- how they get their information. <laughs> like, it's like, right. what are you doing? Now, wanna- uh, WikiLinks had proven to be a thorn in the side of pretty much any uh, organization attempting to keep their dark act- activities hidden. So, anyone that had a secret, pretty much WikiLinks would target them. Oh, like, say, these big corporations so. or governments, they pretty much had to like really keep keep a lid on any secret documents because somehow, some way, WikiLinks would find them. Mm-hmm. Now, each year they released thousands of documents and as a result, Julian Assange has actually was actually found actually found himself to be uh under constant legal fire. Oh, no. pretty much every angle. I mean, cuz you're releasing documents on major governments and corporations mm-hmm. and there are huge implications when it comes to that. I mean, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of power in play. I mean, that's that's a pretty dangerous thing. He obviously had to, you know, do something because mm-hmm. He's pretty much a constant target. So uh, during an interview on BBC's uh, The Andrew Marr Show, uh, Mark Stevens, who is the lawyer of Julian Assange, stated that WikiLinks had information it compared to a, thumor- a thermonuclear device, Uh-oh. which it would only release in the event it needed to protect itself from authorities. Oh, gosh. So a pretty ominous statement regarding an organization that has access to top secret documents from world governments, religious groups, uh, and uh, multi-million dollar national corporations. Very ominous statement to make. Uh, and to leave it as open, uh, you know, open-ended as that, it's, it's wild. Uh, He's basically saying they have a thermonuclear device in their, in their hands, and they're just waiting for a reason to detonate it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that, and, that, and, and that's all he said. I mean, that's... That puts a lump in my stomach. Like, that is such, like, a huge threat. And, like, and what do you do as, like, an official? You're, like, and especially one that, like, probably doesn't know what's going on. Like, okay, still, like, like 
you know, like, what do we do? Like, do we arrest him? Do we put him on house arrest? Like, oh my god, right? Because you really got to. Because that's something I was thinking about when I was before I even got to that point when I was researching this. Uh, I kind of just had the idea of in my mind of like, if you have know, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks, sorry, if WikiLeaks is releasing this sort of information, this like huge groundbreaking stuff, what aren't they releasing? Oh yeah, you know, like what what are they holding back on? Or what are they keeping as a safeguard, you know, to like, you know, someone threatens them, they can be like, oh, well, you can threaten us, but we have this. So back mm-hmm. off, you know, because I mean, they, there's got to be something like that. At least, at least that has to be, uh, at least in their mind, to have a contingency plan. Like oh, that. yeah. They've probably got files on like certain uh, politicians and whatnot and like certain right. incidences. Like it's like, well, if exactly, you want to yeah. come after me, let's look, dig into this find your pile of hogwash and oh my gosh i couldn't imagine Black now male some is such a scary thing oh yeah now some people uh thought this was merely just a scare tactic uh something for him to put out as an ominous statement to kind of scare or deter any anyone attempting legal action or you know trying to threaten wikileaks a lot of people just thought oh it's just a scare tactic. now earlier that year in october of 2010 uh, Julian Assange made a sensational claim to Moscow to a Moscow newspaper uh, where he said the Kremlin had better brace itself oh. for a coming wave of WikiLeaks about Russia. Oh, no. Uh, he would later rebuff that statement as no WikiLeak to follow would solely focus on Russia. So it was kind of like a sensationalist thing because he was talking to a Moscow newspaper. It was kind of like a headline statement for him to to say, like nothing ever came from it. And uh, given that statement from Mark uh, Stevens was never followed up on, some suspected it to be another sensational claim from the headlines. So they expected they they kind of thought, oh, that must be the same thing since Julian Assange here saying this threatening things and then never following up on him. Perhaps this is it. The same thing with what Mark Stevens. The difference being, in my opinion, is Julian Assange is is a figurehead of WikiLeaks or, you know, the creator of WikiLeaks. Yeah. But Mark Stevens is a as a attorney, so I feel like his stuff is probably more to be taken uh, heavier than Julian's. I would yeah, say it would have. Opinion. I mean, I, I would like think it would carry that more a, weight. Yeah, I think as a if you're a lawyer, that would um, be more detrimental to you if like it wasn't true or like right. in this case if it is true, because <laughs> um, like you like you think of lawyers and you know their reputation and like the code of ethics and everything. So it's like. Anyway, I I would think it would be true. I would think it would carry a lot of weight as well. Yeah, I I feel like his uh, Mark Stevens claim probably carries more weight than Julian Assange. He probably was put out there as a threat to like let anyone know like mm-hmm. hey, you should probably like reconsider because we do have some. Right, like kind of their not so friendly warning. Like this is kind right. of your last chance. Now, surely something they equated to a nuclear thermo uh, thermonuclear device. Jeez, mm-hmm. well, I, I have I'm having such a hard time saying that. Something they equated to a thermonuclear device would carry worldwide implications. I mean, to, to say you have a thermonuclear device, that, that's a big claim to make. You know, even, even though they are, you know, not being literal, but still, that's, that's a big thing to equate information you have. Mm-hmm. So that same year, uh, 2010, WikiLinks would tease such a document by, re- by releasing a portion of a correspondence between Vladimir Putin and the head of Russia's northern fleet Admiral Maximov, where they discussed concerns over an anomaly located in the Gulf of Aden. Oh, no. This correspondence was from 2008, the same year CTF-151 was formed and dispatched to the Gulf of Aden. And Russia was one of the countries involved with the uh, combination of uh, CTF-151. All the pieces starting to come together, you see? Yeah. Starting to get everything together. Uh, The anomaly reference was first discovered in early 2000s when a United States Naval Task Force set up in the aftermath of 9-11 was patrolling the Gulf of Aden. There they discovered what they described as a vortex in the middle of the Gulf. This anomaly was reported to be very stable, but due to its unknown nature, it was to be heavily monitored. However, in the correspondence between Putin and Maximov, the the stable condition of the vortex was questioned. As the Admiral reported, it was growing in size. Along with the growth, there were a growing number of seismic events and an intensified global weather pattern. Hmm. Oh. So at this point, it's starting to become unstable. Whatever this is, and I will say, like this is this is where it starts to get really crazy and gets the into that 
that realm of creepypasta stuff because like oh this is like sounds like a scp thing or something you know one of those popular internet fictions yeah um, now it starts to sound like that but for the most part a lot of this stuff is documented not the vortex per se except for here in the and this was a wikileaks document oh. now outside the wikileaks document Stuff like the patrols and the CTF-151 location, all that stuff you can find is, is, is very readily available. That's things that actually happen. You know, there was a task force up after, in the aftermath of 9-11 mm-hmm. uh, that patrolled the Gulf of Aden. Really no reason why it'd be patrolling the Gulf of Aden. There wasn't any uh, you know heavy terrorist activity in that location at the time. And CTF-151 was formed to combat Somali pirates made up of farmers with rifles basically huh and and you brought together 27 nations naval forces to stop these guys yeah that that makes a whole does that seem like a little overkill that that's not no yeah that's a lot of overkill when you start peeling back the layers you're finding things where it's like wait why is that you know why is that a thing you know this right here is like conspiracy theory 101 like not the content but the Beginning to, uh, as we like to say, hashtag question everything, you have to start questioning things. And that's where you kind of start seeing there's a much larger picture. There's something bigger under the surface, if you will. And yeah, this is kind of what you have to do with the ocean at night. And, and, you know, this is probably the most like conspiracy heavy investigation I've ever had to do. Ooh. Uh, a lot of this stuff is pretty on the surface, but or well documented. This, not so much. So right. you got to kind of like find these pieces and you got to start questioning things. It's under the and surface. And it all starts to make a bigger picture. <laughs> it's under the surface, you would say. It's all under the surface, yeah. <laughs> That's So uh, yeah. 27 naval forces is the big thing. The CTF-151, 27 naval forces to stop. And if you ever, if you ever look up like any of these pictures of Smalley pirates, it, it's not very impressive, I will say. I don't mean yeah. to offend any of them but if you look at the pictures of smally pirates it's not that impressive and you would think a couple patrol boats or a few patrol boats from you know, a mercenary force or something like that or it's a special force mm-hmm. with a few boats could probably have like uh maintained it but 27 nations 27 countries i should say 27 countries came together put their naval forces into this and made ctf-151 to combat these guys huh a lot of questions do come from this correspondence you know what was causing the vortex to become unstable? Because we know from these documents, this vortex was discovered in the 2000s, uh, post 9-11. Uh, this correspondence was from 2008. So in those eight years since its discovery, something has been causing it to uh, destabilize. Now, if you look at the when the correspondence was taking place, too, you know they do mention that there is uh, uh, intensified global weather patterns. Now, if you look back at 2008, 2008 was a record year for hurricanes, uh, tornadoes. Was that was that the same year as Katrina? Was that, mm. was that 2008? I'm looking it up. Maybe. You might look it up. But uh, it was a record year for all these different uh, weather, dis- natural disasters. So there's that right there. There's another piece you kind of put into the, the puzzle. But this is something that was happening currently at this time. Uh, the globe was experiencing uh, intensified weather patterns. Were they because of this vortex? Uh, That's up to you. I mean, <laughs> by the way, uh, Hurricane Katrina was in 2005. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is like, because I mean, if you watch the way that hurricanes move, and I mean, it kind of is like a vortex. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they, they use the wind and, and the water to really move themselves and like oh, the pressure, like we talked about, like to move it. So I don't. And, and like it would make the same sense for a vortex just on a larger scale in my layman opinion possibly i mean it, it could i mean it very well could i mean like i said you know the the same time this correspondence was happening and there was growing concerns of this instability and reported global uh, intense global weather patterns there was in fact across the globe uh intensified global weather patterns taking place all over so you know, it's one of those things you kind of take into account. Like that, that is a that is grounded in fact. So, what could be causing the vortex to become unstable? Uh, that that's kind of the big question because it's been eight years that we know of, of that the vortex has been there. But for all we know, it's been there longer. But right. uh, in the in the eight year span since the discovery, uh, it's began to uh, grow unstable. 
Have you ever heard of vertical migration? Um, Do you know you know what that is? I I've heard the term before. So, uh, vertical migration is the largest synchronized migration on the planet, and it happens every night. Uh, to kind of summarize it, the this involves billions and billions of oceanic creatures, huh. uh, mostly small zooplankton, shrimp, and jellies, and small fish. And they throughout the span of the day, they migrate up and down in the in oh, the ocean. Yeah. As these small zooplankton migrate, uh, this also influences the migration of larger predators that feed on them. So, you know, as the zooplankton move up to the surface, so do the sharks and yeah. you know, whales and things that feed on them. Uh, now, how does this relate to the vortex and the heightened activity around it? Uh, well, around this time, Germany uh, had been developing what they called an artificial sun, uh, which is a device used to produce clean energy by burning so bright it causes a form of fusion. Now, this is a real thing. Coincidentally enough, Germany currently uses an artificial sun as a power source today, which Wait. measures 50 feet and produces 10,000 times the solar power of any solar radiation that reaches the Earth. So, is it's that, a real thing. It's a real device. Is it, like, Again, used to use for, like, the whole country or, like, because that's uh, a lot of power. I don't know what power. they power it with. It, it's, it's a lot of power. I don't know if they use the power of the whole country. But it is something they have over in Germany that they they actively use as a power source somewhere. And that's that's kind of freaky. They can like make an make a literal artificial sun. Right. Oh. So it's actual a device out there, and like you you two kind of take in like why isn't this you know if this thing is producing that much power, why don't we have more of these? I mean, right? But, yeah. They talk about how the sun is like what is it the sun is dying every day or like gonna burn out one day and it's like why aren't right. we using these then why aren't we utilizing these well i mean if the sun burns out we have a lot more problems than that that's true but, too uh, i don't think these are going to save us from when the sun burns out <laughs> um but it would be a good thing for us to have to you know save on things like you know the amount of fossil fuels are burning it would be a good thing to maybe utilize these devices but again i don't know i, I feel like maybe they wouldn't they would probably heat up the atmosphere quite a bit i feel like maybe too uh, yeah, that's a good point. So, uh, this device that we know exists was being tested around 2010 and believed to be within the time, uh, it was believed to have been tested in the Gulf of Aden. Now, possibly because of the uh, observational vantage points, you could take this device, put out like a barge or something like that. And you could see it from basically all directions in the Gulf of Aden. You could, you could see it from the shores of uh, Yemen and Somalia. That's a theory of why it may have been tested in Gulf of Aden, if it was tested in Gulf of Aden. That right there is one of the things that's up for debate. Uh, we don't know if it was being tested in the Gulf of Aden. It's just something that people theorize. So the way it goes, or though the theory is, that the Germans towed this massive artificial sun uh, to the Gulf of Aden and activated it with, uh, I presume, the intention to test the device capability uh, to create hydrogen fuel. Now, the way this is done is they would turn this thing on and it would burn so bright that it would split the water, n not Moses. I was getting ready to say, like, like, like in the Bible? <laughs> no, it would basically split the uh, the water molecules uh, component elements. It it could split the water into component elements. Oh. So I'm not a biologist. I don't know what any of this means. It's just stuff I copied offline. So <laughs> if this is wrong, leave it in the comments. A, yeah, tell us. Tell I us. wrote down what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> because I I'm not a biologist. I'm an engineer. <laughs> it's okay. So uh, we're, we're we're all along with you for the ride. Yeah. So uh, they illuminate this massive artificial sun, uh, presumably at night, uh, which sends the ocean into a frenzy because vertical migration is very dependent on the sun. Oh yeah. You know, as the sun is bright, you know, it'll it'll you know, kind of uh, motivate whether or not the you know crustaceans move up or down you know throughout the day and night that's kind of what vertical migration is. that's why it takes place over a 24-hour span is as the light dims and rises that's what causes the the small microplankton to move up and down so this sends the ocean into a frenzy and totally disrupts vertical migration and because of the intensity of the device they awaken something oh god so between november 2010 to april 2011 over 100 earthquakes rocked the Gulf of Aden, perhaps by something moving below the surface. Now, you can look it up. Between November 2010 and April 2011, 
there were an ungodly amount of earthquakes that rocked this area, and no one has an idea why. No scientist has ever came forth to, to say why, but for whatever reason, this area, there was a heightened amount of seismic activity that nobody can explain. Listen, if, if Godzilla is <laughs> down there, I'm, I'm not going to get married. Like Ben's going to go and, oh man. But that's that's crazy. It does make it does I it, it's crazy. Like I fuck it. It does make for a case that like something is moving down there and I say that because like we don't know what's down there. And yeah, like for something a, big enough, something big enough and threatening enough. Yes. to call upon the combined forces of 27 countries naval forces perhaps. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. So for this 6 month period, earthquakes would sporadically shake the area around the mm. Gulf of Aden, an event already out of the norm, as this is not an area with an act. This is not. This isn't an active seismic zone. All the while, twenty-seven countries were sending their naval forces to officially fight pirates. Now, these are all facts. You can find them very easily. Uh, the source: the earthquake has never been determined. Earthquakes, I should say. But seismologists noted that there were especially unusual because of their monotonous low frequency ring. So all these uh, all these earthquakes had a very monotonous ring to them. It wasn't like uh, they weren't different. They were all the same. It was like a you know, very monotonous pattern. So that's very out of the norm for earthquakes because you'll see, you'll see, you'll see an earthquake. It'll be very big, yeah. very small, then it'll kind of dissipate. Mm -hmm. These were monotonous. It was doom, 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 you know, or something like that. Like it actually had so, like a like an intention to it, like a rhythm. Yeah, like it. it was it was moving with a rhythm. Yeah, it had it was it was moving with intent. It wasn't just this random stuff. So with all these details, that begs the question: Did we unwittingly awaken something below the Gulf of Aden, something big enough to literally shake the area, cause twenty seven countries to band together to step in? Now, according to WikiLinks, this is exactly what occurred between late two thousand ten and early two thousand eleven. And they claim to have proof, but to this day, have never released the full document. Only snippets. Oh, bitches. Oh, release it. We yeah. all know how I feel about this. <laughs> the leaked correspondence between Vlad Vladimir Putin and Admiral Maximov states, Russia is prepared to join with the Americans to defeat what many world officials believe to be an attack on our planet by forces previously unknown that was a direct quote from the document between putin and maximov i no no <laughs> these are not the kind of aliens i hope for <laughs> oh god uh, okay now if the full document claiming to prove this incident was released it would almost certainly incite global worldwide panic i mean but, yeah <laughs> but why haven't they released it well in 2009 WikiLinks founder Julian Assange was arrested in Ecuador, where he was seeking asylum since 2012. He was sentenced to 50 weeks in jail. While in jail, the U.S. government reasserted an indictment against Assange regarding the previously touched on documents he, they leaked in 2010. But the U.S. further charged Assange in violation of the Espionage Act of 1917. Now, the Espionage Act of 1917... Uh, is in itself a very controversial law. Uh, it was originally uh, intended to prevent in interference with military operations and recruitment, oh. but has been questioned on numerous occasions for how it may violate freedom of speech. So basically, the Espionage Act of twenty of nineteen seventeen will, if you interfere with, you know, aside from the military operations part. Uh, the the questionable part is the recruitment aspect of it. If you interfere with any form of military recruitment, you are in violation of the Espionage Act of 1917, and it's a federal law, and you'll be sentenced to prison. So, oh, oh if my. say say you see a buddy that's signed up for the military, and you're like, hey man, don't sign up for the military, you just violated the Espionage Act of 1917. You are uh, you could be put in prison. So that that in itself is a very controversial. Law. And that's still a thing. Yeah, still a thing. Oh my still goodness. Yeah. My little, oh no, oh no. Now, people. thusly, the U.S. government was criticized by the media for enacting this charge. Being seen as a direct attack on the First Amendment, which guarantees freedom of the press. Right. Because, you know, WikiLinks, for all it's, all it's worth, is a, you know, 
is is the press. They are a publication, uh, a news outlet. You know, they're reporting on what they find. Uh, you see, the interesting thing about Julian Assange is that he's never charged or even accused of things such as slander or fraud. Huh. He's only ever accused of releasing information. So oh, no shit. one's saying, <laughs> no one's saying like, hey, you're you're making this stuff up. No one's ever saying that. They're saying like, hey, you're releasing this, and so we don't want you to release it. That's the interesting thing about Julian Assange is no one is saying you're a liar. That's Th- uncomfortable. Um, yeah, they're 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 not like the U.S. government isn't saying like you're you're producing fraudulent information and you're you're slandering us. No, they're saying like you're releasing things we don't want you to release. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, because I mean the first thing you would want to do when you're fighting something like that is to discredit them. So you call them a liar. You you disprove right. what they're saying. But you can't disprove what someone else is saying if the other if what they're trying to disprove is actually true. Yeah, this is because the information uh, Julian Assange and WikiLinks are presenting are real. They cannot be subject to claims of slander because they're not slanderous. They're true statements. They're real documents. So since his 2019 arrest, Julian Assange has been held in a high-security London prison. What? A class A, class a prison, uh, which is exclusive to those who's, whose escape would be dangerous to either public or national security. What the fuck? <laughs> what on earth? He uh, uh, he released information. Like talk right. about an overkill. Like yeah. oh my gosh. Now on several occasions, the U.S. government has lobbied for Assange uh, to be extradited to the United States. Why? But in each instance, this has been blocked either by court ruling or successful appeal by Assange. Uh, as of late July of this year. So just as, as recently as July of 2022, they tried this and uh, Julian Assange or the court have you know stopped it from happening. Uh, now, despite Assange being in prison, WikiLinks is still very active. Uh, what is keeping them from releasing the full document? You know, is this the thermonuclear device document uh, Mark Stevens warned them about? Would it be the ocean at night, you think? I think it would. I, I think it would have to be. Because, I mean, you have the... You have the correspondent from, you know, Vladimir Putin reaching out to the U.S., which is, I mean, that's kind of a huge deal, Um, especially with the, I mean, I don't know the guy personally, so like the stigma and the stereotype around Vladimir Putin reaching out to the U.S. being like, I will hold your hand if we're being attacked by other worldly (laughs) forces. That's, that's. Yeah, I I think the wording they use is very interesting. It is. uh let me go to my notes here because it's it's very interesting. It's, it caught me. What is because it, it, it's a direct quote. I'll read it again. Um, it's a direct quote. No, oh yeah, gosh. it's a direct quote from the correspondence. Ooh. Now you can find the the correspondence um, on the the YouTube channel Truly Bizarre. I mentioned earlier they have an Ocean at Night video, and in the um, description of that video, they do link the WikiLeaks document. So I, I read a little bit of it. Uh, but the, the quote is, Russia is prepared to join with the Americans to defeat, which many world world officials believe is an attack on our planet by forces previously unknown. And that was a direct quote between Putin and Maxinov. I mean, the many world leaders, yeah, many world leaders, that means multiple people have, you know, congregated and talked about this, had a meeting. Yeah, the they, 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 they made a decision to combine 27 countries, naval forces. Oh. to go there presumably previously you know, officially is to combat you know farmers and speedboats with rifles you know <laughs> but and, a bit, you know, and this came that out make sense do we have a, a year on when the correspondent was made uh with- the correspondence was made in 2008 uh but it was released in 2010 or 2011 i believe so it was made um what year did the I'm, I've been taking notes. What year did the 151 one come out? The Combined Task Force 151. One. So 151 was, let me go through my notes here. 151 was uh, 2008 is when it was. Oh, uh, gosh. So that's around like, okay, okay, we're connecting. I've been connecting more dots here. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. they That was around the time that CTF 151 was put together was when the Russian admiral was corresponding with Putin and basically saying we need to join forces with the United States. And that that's when that happened when CTF-151 was put together. And the U.S. is telling, you know, this guy, you need to be quiet. You need to be really yeah. quiet. I want to know why the U.S. wants them. I want, I want a public statement made 
a well, wide. Well, there's re- actually a um, a thing I found. Like uh, at one point, there was a attempted assassination on Julian Assange by the CIA, but it was stopped because WikiLeaks discovered documents planning. Oh no! <laughs> so they they stopped it from happening. Oh my god! But there, so- there, there, and and this was I believe Hillary Clinton was involved in this. I believe. Of course, she was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, fuck. I mean, the sky, the sky is blue. There's an assassination. Yeah. She's involved. Um, now, some believe the ocean at night is such the thermal nuclear device that uh, Mark Stevens referenced in his interview. Perhaps the reason it hasn't been fully released is because it's being uh, used as leverage, possibly to keep Julian Assange from being sent to the U.S., where he would face a much harsher sentence. Um, you know, if they right now he's sitting in a class A prison in London. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's what it's like in there. I don't know if it's like one of those comfy federal type deals. But surely, if they sent him over to the United States, oh God, no! It would be much worse for him. Oh, I mean, it's gonna they be. Would, they'd, bad. they'd probably have him executed in some manner. I mean, it would be some. You know, it, it would be one of those. Um, you know, Epstein kind of things. I was getting way. ready to say, if Hillary Clinton's involved, how do you think he's going to end up? <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> I mean, let's be real. So, so they're basically claiming like this thing is probably like a bomb, more than likely a bomb, correct? Or do we just not know? Because it's no, no, they're not unknown. saying it's a bomb. They're 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 basically comparing the document to a bomb. Oh no, they're they're not saying they have a bomb. They're okay. calling the document they have is the equivalent of a thermonuclear device, meaning that you know if they release this, it's going to affect the world. Oh shit! Is what they're saying. They're not saying they have a bomb or yeah, there is a and, bomb. And I mean, things previously unknown, like that. That that sounds like people under him knew about it, or people like in the same circle knew about it, and then it was brought to his attention when it finally just got out of control. Possibly. I mean, it could have been one. Of the, like I said, after you know, from what we know, the vortex was discovered in the early two thousands by the United States, and. It was stable at the time, but it did become heavily monitored because it was very unknown as to what exactly it was. I assume that, you know, it was probably made that other nations were made aware of like, hey, there's this you know thing in the middle of the Gulf of Aden and we need to keep an eye on it. So I imagine things were kind of corresponded and that probably what hastened the formation of CTF 151. And there probably was some sort of like smaller uh, unit, I would say, before 151. Oh, yeah. I would, I'd would, i almost say there was probably a smaller unit that was just like an observational Yeah, like a research force. team or... Yeah, you know. and then, you know, the... As it became unstable and started, started affecting the globe, you know, with earthquakes and uh, increased weather patterns, which I think is pretty wild that it can manipulate weather. That's... Uh, that that's, probably, you know, incited the, the need for 151. Right. And I mean, the weather, we live in Ohio, so we're not great judges of weather. I mean, it changes daily here. So that's that's really crazy that it is like influencing or, you know, creating different weather pl- patterns. And that's just yeah, cause like I said, all, all this stuff. That's what kind of really made me uh, curious about this is like, you know, I started kind of back researching, I would say, you know, I was like, what was the weather like in 2008 when mm-hmm. this was? This supposed correspondence. The weather in 2008 was very crazy and sporadic, and there was a lot of very intense storms and things that were taking place, and people were really getting concerned about global warming at this point oh. because it increased weather um, activity. So that falls into play. There, uh, the earthquakes uh, in the Gulf of Aden that's documented, that's real. CTF 151 is real. Uh, this document that uh, WikiLinks released is real. All this stuff. It's it's real things. That's wild. That's wild. And then and they I, come to fit together. So they really do though. And like the craziest <laughs> part is like in the Gulf of Aden, where like all all of the testing may have happened, you know, they're now having like all of these crazy earthquakes and they're not even on a seismic zone. Right. Now now that is the the main the the biggest question of the whole thing, aside from you, obviously, is there a monster underneath the Gulf of Aden? But the uh the artificial sun. That is something that is, you can look up multiple things with the ocean at night, and you're going to find pretty much the same information everywhere you look. The difference is, some may mention the artificial sun, some may not mention the artificial sun. 
wonder why that is. So some people just believe it to be a vortex in the middle of the ocean. And that's what caused it. Other people, you know, that was just, it was just there and intensified and that's what caused everything. And then other people believe that all oh, it was kind of um, hastened by, or it was disrupted by the artificial sun. So there, there's two different kind of pathways you can take. I don't know why, but the artificial sun is the most contentious point of the whole theory is whether or not the artificial sun is involved or not. But everything else is the same when you look up the ocean at night. CTF-151, the vortex, WikiLeaks, earthquakes, weather patterns, all that's there. The artificial sun is the biggest uh, uh, mystery component of it all, oh, whether man. or not that's actually involved in that. So a lot of this, uh, what you believe in the ocean at night, does kind of lie in your opinion on WikiLeaks. That, that's the biggest thing. Well, I'm just saying they're getting charged for releasing information, not for saying they lied. Exactly. That that's the biggest thing. That that's that to me is the most um, interesting part is that no one is ever accusing Julian Assange of lying, of manipulating people. Mm -mm. They're just saying, "Hey, you're releasing this stuff. We don't want you to release." <laughs> like they're they're not saying you're an out you're a liar. They because they can't because at the end of the day, everything that WikiLeaks has released so far is true. Right. It's just. You know, the, the government and those certain entities just want to really like bury that because like it's a dark side and like it's especially like it raises a lot of questions yeah, as well. And I mean, you can go all the way back to the start of this when pollution was getting into the water and then, you right. know, the testing that happens there and the kind of sound. I don't know. And it, the way it sounds to me is like there was a lot of neglect in this area. Um, the way it sounds to me, I don't, I don't really know if that's true, so I don't want to make any claims, but yeah, it's just, it all sounds so strange and it fits too well together to really not be questioned and then not take into account like what the actual hell about these earthquakes. I still can't get over the fucking earthquakes. <laughs> that, that is pretty crazy. Oh earthquakes. my gosh. That... It wasn't even researched. Like you would think like a, an anomaly like that, that would be all over the the, all well, over I mean, the there, there's only stuff that you can research when it comes to seismology. I mean, there's, you know, what was, you know, what was the tectonic you know, variables that come into play with that? And there, there just frankly wasn't any. It's just one of those mysteries of what was causing all these earthquakes to happen. I mean, it was over a hundred earthquakes in a six month span. My God. But that was the ocean at night, espionage, pirates, elite military forces, and maybe monsters. That's the ocean at night. Uh, Did you oh see any of that coming? No, no, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, no, I didn't. I didn't really see a whole lot of that coming. <laughs> I was, you had me on edge. I was on the twists and turns. It's, it's a wild ride. It really it, is. It, if, if you if you want to research yourself, I mean, there's not much more information you'll be able to find outside of what I what I was able to to relay. But I it's one of those that. things. It's it's a it's a deep dive once you get into it. But man, there, there's so much ground in facts. That's one of the things I was kind of doing when I was reading these articles and things, because uh, you'll you'll find, like I said, like the 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 document or the the blog by um, Adam Hennessy, and he has an article called "The Gulf of Aden Incident." That's pretty detailed. And then the truly bizarre uh, YouTube channel, they have a video on it. I can't wait to look at that. But they're pretty much what, what we were able to relay here but one thing i was doing is as i was reading the gulf of aden article in particular i was going like kind of uh, cross-referencing so i would see you know ctf 151 so i would kind of look up what the history was of ctf 151 and that's where i got into the origins of smally piracy um, oh man and that, that's also where i started looking at like pictures of smally pirates and was like what did we need <laughs> all, these, all these naval forces for to combat these guys. Maybe they're more dangerous than they look, but I, to me, it was like, there's what is the purpose? I mean, of this? I looked up the photos as we were talking about it, and they, I mean, I mean, they're guys with guns, so of course they look threatening, but it's like, right. I don't think 27 countries needed to come together in order to, to combat them. No, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think, I mean, um, U.S. could have took them. It would have been right. Fine. I, mean, I, I would think something as easy as, you know, just like positioning a sniper on you know, ships that travel through that water would be just you know easy enough. But I mean, there's other ways. There's definitely other ways. Oh, for sure. 
But uh, so I would, you know, I would see things about the earthquakes. So I'd go and investigate the earthquakes a little more. And those are real. You know, I was kind of just cross referencing, trying to see if I could find where things didn't quite add up. But the scary thing is everything kind of adds up. So <laughs> that is the terrifying part that everything adds up. And yet there's still such little information about it. It 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 really does make you wonder what is what else is there? Because there's more than that. There's clearly more than that. Right, um, yeah. WikiLinks has never WikiLeaks. I keep saying WikiLinks, and that's from that episode of South Park with the hand, <laughs> with the fucking gerbil. WikiLeaks has never released a full document, but they claim to have, and they have. They dropped the you know the correspondence and everything between Maximoff and Putin, and I think that's pretty chilling in itself. Just kind of the way they they word things, and that you know it's this high ranking uh, admiral in the Russian Navy corresponding with you know basically the 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 leader of russia and they're just openly talking about this vortex and you know having them aligned with america and a worldwide threat i mean it's it's pretty chilling stuff when you take into consideration what kind of context it's being you know brought to you in so and, and like i said the, the main thing the whole thing is like it's all dependent on what your opinion is of wikileaks is are they a credible source for news are they not I don't really have a dog in a fight because I've never like used the WikiLeaks as a source. But the the one thing I, that kept ringing out to me was there's no instance of them being accused of lying. And that's what sells it for me. That's what makes me believe that it it would be a credible source or that it is a credible source. Um, is because you know we see, especially in today's media, we see so many people coming out and like attacking these publications about lying and you know fraud and. Um, uh, defamation and whatnot and you would think the u.s government would be like oh no oh no or you know some sort of big oh, entity because yeah. the u.s clearly wants him um if they've gone in and fought for him to come back here uh, yeah i can i can only imagine like like i said if, if he was to be extradited to the united states i don't think he would be alive for long i think it would be he'd, he'd probably be dead pretty quickly i imagine by some you know, by some means, either by you know, being punished by death or he'd be suicided. Epstein. Let's be yeah, real, he'd be, he'd like be suicided. Yeah, he'd be suicided. And the thing with WikiLinks is they have such a track record of you know what many people believe to be one of the one of the few credible and unbiased news sources. I, I feel like they would, if they're releasing information like this and it's not true. I mean, that's all it takes is for one stupid dumb release like a new uh, you know dropping some some hoax mm -hmm. to ruin their credibility forever they become the yeah. weekly world news at that point oh yeah you, you know what that is yes world news? yes that yes. boy yeah <laughs> like that, that that's what they would become I mean, immediately and and from that point on everything they release would be just the uh you know the uh a fodder for jokes and mm -hmm. you know people would just immediately displace it i mean because they would not have any credibility oh, after yeah. that because they're, it's not true. they're dealing with heavy stuff like multi-million dollar corporations and you know major religious groups and world governments and i don't think they can afford to play around and release some gag hoax mm -hmm. document like i, I gotta kind of believe that if they're they're saying they have this and they're releasing these snippets it's grounded in some sort of reality so do you think if they have these kinds of files that they have like the roswell and mothman and I, I feel like see, i feel like <laughs> I feel like they would have released those, honestly. I yeah, pro honestly. I, I I feel like if they had the Roswell things, they would have probably like just dropped them. Yeah. Uh, Good point. I feel like they would have. I wonder what they have on the Catholic Church on Rome in specific. Oh, they've released some crazy stuff on the Catholic Church. I think that was like the last major thing they released was some uh document with the Catholic Church and uh paying off um victims of Oh yeah, you're yeah. right. You're I'm right. Sure no, that's yeah, so and they're, they're fucking with the with the church of Scientology. I mean, they they really have no like fear of these places. they are these you know enemies they're making. That's kind of the crazy thing about it is and they're like dealing with some heavy shit. Yeah, and like I mean, if you've ever watched any of like the Scientology like documentaries, <laughs> oh um, yeah, they're wild. Oh my gosh, and like the way they talk about like the way they describe you know when you want to leave the Church of Scientology, like for those of you who don't know, like you pretty much get like disowned. Uh, by everybody yeah. um you get you get stalked too yeah afterwards. Like, yeah and, like, they don't people let you try go. to hurt you and like it's it's crazy like it's 
it's terrifying. So to have like those kinds of people against you. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh no. I don't know. I couldn't deal. I don't know how I deal. I really don't. It's wild. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And like I said, like this, the ocean night thing, I mean, it's, I, 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 three months ago, I didn't know about it. Now I know everything I I can about it because it's, it's something that's just far out. And I really did feel like a conspiracy theorist researching this because I was having to go down all these different routes and, you know, pick things apart and look under the surface and, yes. you know, read, read between the lines and mm. stuff. And it was, it was wild. But I mean, what do you think of the ocean? I, what, what, what do you think of it? Uh, well, first of all, it's wild. Um, I just, oh my gosh, it's, it's crazy that all this kind of that all this started with just some you know farmers with rifles basically i mean there was just so much leading up to it and there's so much that's built into it and like the whole time you're telling me like now this is fact this is fact and i'm like okay what is it whoa it's that the vortex is absolutely insane i would love to figure to find like how old the vortex is or when our first discovery of the vortex was if we can find an age also if like divers have gone down in the vortex I wonder what that would look like. I don't know. Because that, that's the kind of thing. It was kind of like glossed over, if anything. the Because the Vortex, aside from the mention in the correspondence with the um, you know, with Maximov and uh, Putin, uh, there's only just a very little information about the discovery of it in the early 2000s. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think that'd be a pretty bold kind of thing to do is like find this vortex you have no idea what it is in the first place and dunk somebody into it <laughs> like that well maybe of, not somebody but like uh, a like a camera device or something yeah drop down a drone down it yeah that might, that'd yeah, yeah. Be, uh, that'd be the more ethical way to do yeah, that but yeah <laughs> when's the u.s government ever cared about uh, yeah i mean for real uh, we've got project paperclip for that one yeah um, you got all kinds of stuff to dig into but yeah i mean it was wild i it, and just the way the the artificial sun works, and the fact that we there is one operating in Germany yeah. right now. Um, yeah, you can find pictures of it. It's it's pretty wild. Oh, it's that's big, cool. Like it's just a big sphere made of like these uh, high intensity lights. Oh, that's super I mean, cool. Yeah, you can find pictures of it. It's it's pretty wild. But yeah, I yeah. I'm fascinated. I really really wish there was more out there. And if more does come out, we'll have to come back. Because I would, I, I really oh, want to know more. I feel like any more comes out of this, it's going to be everyone's going to know. I, I, I honestly be, hope so. I really hope. This is one of those know. things that if it ever, if more information comes out, I feel like you would have to be uh, hiding under a rock to not know about it because it carries such wide applications. It's almost, it's insane. I, I'm surprised it took me this long to find out about it. Interesting. I don't know. I'm I'm always one that's like, just get everything out there on the table and let us know what we're, what we're all dealing <laughs> with. Um, so yeah, I would hope that more information would come out about it. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, th- the thing of that is, I mean, you say, hey, there's this unknown vortex in the middle of the ocean we don't know about and there might be something in it. You're gonna have all these fucking idiots like trying to. <sighs> That's you know, the problem. Drive boats out and you know f- then fly drones into it or shoot at it or. I mean. Log into it. I mean, I don't. Everyone's know. responsible for their own choices. You have the fucking Paul kids <laughs> up there trying to bungee jump into it. Oh my god, this might is not be jackass. the best idea. <laughs> might not be the best. I- it might not be the worst idea. Honestly, let the Paul kids jump in. I don't give a shit. I don't know. But uh, I mean, don't know. It, it's. Always, it, it's wild. I always forget and, that, uh, people, that most people don't have common sense. That's oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Yeah, I, I. A lot of times, I can see why the government wouldn't release some information because uh, a majority of the population are fucking idiots, and you don't know how they'll react or how crazy they'll react. Or people so. just get panicked and they get too lost in their panic, and it's like, calm yeah. the fuck down. Or we, don't we, know live what- a, we live in a world right now where it's all about clout. You know, being the first to do something. It's like, oh, there's a. You know, vortex out there. I want to be the first person to go out and vlog into it. I mean, that's, that's kind of the shit you got to deal with. I mean, it's like all this dumb shit. And I, I get on some cases why you would, you know, hide this stuff. Or I but, mean, again, everybody's responsible for their own choices. So yeah, I mean, you could become this, immortal. I mean, I carry more implications. Though. You could, you could be become immortal by some radiation and you know cool lights by the art of another you know testing subject down there or you could get eaten by a monster it's really your choice choose your own adventure Uh, but i i i love this i i 
you've definitely interested me more. I cannot wait to go read the read the blog and go watch the YouTube video because this is very, very interesting. And like I said, I would love to know more, even if it's just like a little bit of a taste of a little bit more. Like I just I want to get a better idea. You want to hear of more, yeah. There. That's the thing. I mean, it was it was a fun dive for me because I really could not get enough. And that was the thing. I was so hungry for information on this, and there's so little information out there. It was infuriating. So hopefully this is for by all accounts the definitive uh episode on the ocean night where if you don't know what it is hopefully now you do because it's terrifying and it really makes you question things around you i mean it's it's so wild that it's hard to believe but all the pieces are there and that's that's the crazy thing about it and i guess that is what makes up a really good conspiracy though is when you have all these uh bits and bobs that you can ground reality and put together. I mean, that, that really is uh, what kind of makes a conspiracy mm-hmm. theory is when there's so much that makes sense, but yet so little it makes sense. Yes. So many so. questions to be had. But there you have it. That was file 004. Wonderful. That was the an Ocean awesome one. Night, our, our final episode here for Cultober. That's an awesome one. I feel like I need a reaction cam when we do these because like <laughs> there's a lot of, I, I'm a very facial expressive person and like there's a lot of like, what the fuck faces? <laughs> so that was a good one. That, that was I'm awesome. I'm glad you liked it. Yes, that was I'm great. I'm, it. I'm definitely going to have new nightmares now. So thank you for that. <laughs> Um, but good. that was it for Cultober. But Cultober's not over. I mean, there's still more stuff coming out from uh, Cult of Campbell. Uh, we have the uh, Friday Cultober exclusive movie reviews. And we have, of course, our Halloween special, uh, Beetlejuice, the watch along coming up yeah. here on Halloween Day. I believe now it's when it's releasing. So, yes. Yes. Um, a, lot of st- a lot of stuff left here for Cultober. We hope you've enjoyed it so far and uh, continue to the feast on these treats we're putting out for you for the Halloween season as we celebrate Cultober. And on our next episode of Cult Talks Conspiracy, I will be presenting again. I will be bringing you guys the men in black. Yes, I'm uh, super excited for this it's gonna one. It's going to be a fun one. I have, I have a few tangents I'm going to go on in that one. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good ride. Oh, I'm excited. Um, but yeah, it's, we're, we're breaking up the the the, the pattern for, for a minute. Well, I'm going to be presenting two in a row. But I think you guys really enjoy the Men in Black. I'm excited to do it. That's be our first episode for November, November first, I believe. Yes, yeah. When that's coming out, so yes, I'm I'm super excited. I can't wait. This is something that I I've <laughs> heard quite a bit of stories, but I've never heard an explanation. So I'm going to be really excited to see to hear what you come up with. Um, yeah, that's gonna, gonna be a fun one. Yes. Um, I'm currently uh, deep in the research on that one. Oh, so. Boy. We'll see. Are I you like on page 15 or 25? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying. I like to be in depth. Like I said, the, the main purpose of Cult Talk Conspiracy is uh, these should be the definitive episodes. Oh, absolutely. I want you guys to come in and leave all the information you need uh, to question everything as it is. But if you want to find more stuff from Cult Talk Net, you can follow us at Cult Talk Net, of course. Uh, you can find us everywhere. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, TikTok. Ben is still trying to get Rumble going. So if you want to follow him on Rumble, it should be go, up. It you should go, be you go up. follow Ben over on Rumble. In real um, in real time, uh, he to- he did tell me to get it up by the end of the week. So by the time this oh, episode nice. releases, it should be up. Okay. Uh, you can find it there if you're into that. But everywhere, it should be at Cult Talk Net. Uh, we'll try to get active on Reddit. I, I don't know a lot oh, about yeah. Reddit, but I'm, I'm going to try to get active on there so we can interact with you guys a little better. But you can always interact with us on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, pretty active on Instagram uh, at Cult Talk Net, of course, and that's where we kind of put it where everything's releasing. It's kind of the main hub. And we do you respond. There and you, you can see where everything's coming out on Instagram. So. And we do read everything, and like we do respond if we get the chance to. But we oh do, yeah, we, we have a hundred percent response rating oh, on uh, Facebook. So. We, we we reply within two minutes, I believe. Oh my so. gosh, that's amazing, guys! See, <laughs> see, we'll respond to you. If yeah, you, you if get over on lonely. Facebook and you drop some comments, we'll talk to you. Send us a message, we'll talk to you. We love talking to our fans, and uh, let us know what you guys think of the ocean at night. I'm very, very curious as to what everyone thinks of this because it. I, I can't say enough. It's a wild fucking ride. It's a deep dive and some very, uh, very conspiracy sounding stuff. Because I really did feel like a tinfoil hat, like conspiracy <laughs> guy researching this. I love it. I love yeah, it. I, I really did. I was like, I was reading about just undis- you know, top secret government documents and espionage, and it, it was a fun one to research. I love um, it. 
But yeah, make sure you follow us all, and we'll be back here November 1st for The Men in Black, presented by myself. Uh, and hope you guys enjoyed. I, I thought this was awesome. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. Hope to see you back November 1st for Men in Black. It's going to be a really, really spooky one. I'm excited. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for Cult Talk Conspiracy. Again, follow us everything, Cult Talk Net. Let us know. Reach out and interact with us. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, I've been Ty. I've been Bailey. Question everything.